everybody. I'm Joe Locasano. I'm the curator of the exhibition Phantasmagoric here at the State College of Florida Fine Art Gallery. I want to thank you all for coming. It's great to see you. And I wanted to let you know that today we're going to be featuring an interview which is going to be conducted by Laura Schlesing Schlesner. I knew I'd mess that up. <laughs> Laura Schlesner. She's the daughter of Elizabeth Stevens, and Elizabeth Stevens is the artist who we are featuring in the exhibition Phantasmagoric. Uh, just briefly, I want to say that I have put on your seats catalogs of the exhibition, and inside the front cover are surveys. And those of you that have been getting surveys, I've been survey happy these last several weeks. So another survey to collect a little information from you uh, to find out how we're doing, how this program, uh, how successful we are. So we'd appreciate you if, uh, taking a moment. I've got pencils to hand out to you as well if you don't have something to write with. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this interview. And uh, if you have any questions afterwards, we'll have a question and answer period, and also, books available by both authors, authors and a book signing afterwards. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce both Laura Schlesner and Elizabeth Stevens. Thank you, everyone. Well, welcome, everyone, and thank you so much for coming on this Thursday afternoon. And. Uh, this is a, a special uh, moment uh, for us both. I'll, I'll speak for us, if that's uh, yes, good. <laughs> but um, to be able to present in this, this wonderful exhibition that, from my personal perspective, highlights so many different aspects of my mother's work and things that have interested her, from printmaking to art history to writing. Um, with this project that we're going to present today, we're giving a little background, a little, we could say, a little bit of a historical grounding in work that my mother did uh, in the early 60s. And uh, you could say, now would you say, I'm say, this is sort of the beginning of your work as a, as a graphic artist? I think it was, yes. I thought I was going to be an English teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I almost was, but instead, uh, I was trying to make money. I was very poor, and I tried to sell my drawings, and I could get ten dollars for a drawing, <laughs> and that was good. Yeah. Yeah. And and now these drawings that uh, we've collected here are all from um, the first half of the '60s. That's right. Yeah. And maybe some of you uh, who are a little little older might recognize this face. Um, I'll show you a few of the first drawings. These are from uh, uh, the campaign, the presidential campaign of 1960. So this is Richard Nixon, not the president, not the not yet presidential Richard Nixon, uh, who lost to Kennedy, of course, mm -hmm. in 1960. And here are some of these. Uh, now, as I'm paging through, tell me what medium these drawings were done in. They're all in the black India ink. And I would go around with a pig pad and a little bottle of ink and a brush <laughs> and maybe a pen. And I always wore black because I spilled. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, these are the, some of the people. Are, you don't know what side they're on, but you know what they're like. <laughs> oh, dear. And uh, these are images. Now, some of these images, tell me how you source these images. These are images here from the Cuban, Cuban Missile Crisis. Now, That's right. Uh, well, I, got a, I thought I could sell these drawings to magazines because there's a very big you know, Cuban Missile Crisis. So I went to Florida. I rented a little car, and I drove around. Of course, I didn't have any security. I was nobody. So I, I got to Cape Canaveral, and I couldn't get in. <laughs> of course not. So I had a, there was a big soldier who told me I couldn't get in. 
And uh, so I drew pictures of the outside. <laughs> that was it. I can't, I would, yeah. You can't always see all of these. Yeah. If you, these are images, this is the, I'm showing you images from the print PDF. So at some times the images that go across the page are a little right. broken up because the designer uh, had them so that, that when you actually open the page, it, it actually goes across the full page. But. Yeah. So what, what kinds of magazines were you working for at well, the time? Well, I worked for small magazines that used drawings, mm -hmm. not photographs. Mm -hmm. There were three. One was a new leader. This is one. I did that cover. We have a vintage of it now. So of course, that's Martin Luther King. No, I, think, I think this, is the, this was the old Miss. This yeah. was the uh, James Meredith. Cause from no, this, that's Martin Luther King. Uh, I think so. I think this was the uh, Kennedy in Mississippi article. Maybe so. Which, uh, within when um, James Meredith was the first African American to enroll in Old that's Miss. That's right. And uh, he was es escorted to class to his dormitory by U.S. Marshals, and then riots ensued. But do you remember? You didn't go down to this. You weren't present for these images. I don't think so. <laughs> this is 50 years ago. You know, I can't remember everything, but I try. <laughs> I can't remember every detail, but uh, I know, I think I did go down there. Yeah, I think yeah. I did. Yeah. Yeah. I was also working later for the Washington Post as a writer. I became a a journalist and worked for the Washington Post. Yeah. So this is these are incidents at University of Mississippi. Yes, right. These are incidents it at University. It was very violent. It mm. was. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah. Very. Yeah. And. And what other magazines did you work for? You worked for The New Leader, which was a, a more a liberal leaning? A, yeah. And then there was a, The Natural Review, which was to the right. I didn't agree with them, but I needed $10. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> yeah, you know, my rent was 65 a month. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway. well. Tell me a little bit about, in terms of your artistic background, I mean, how did you start doing these? these? How I didn't did you start? have any background, really, because I went to Wellesley College and I majored in English. Wow. And really, at the time, you know, there wasn't much choice. People mm -hmm. told me I could be a secretary or mm -hmm. I could be a teacher yeah. or get married. That was about right. one, two, three. What else right. was there? Not much, really. And uh, so <laughs> I thought I would be an English teacher. And I did do part-time jobs in New York. But uh, then I got interested in uh, drawing, and I wanted to go to the Art Students League. I didn't have enough money to stay more than a year. <laughs> mm -hmm because I was working part-time at Barnes & Noble bookstore, and I would sell second-hand textbooks. And that paid 25 a week. <laughs> and, but I had a room and uh, two meals a day in a, place, in a place called the Ladies' Christian Union. Yikes. <laughs> and uh, that cost 15. So I had $10 left over for the week, and that really wasn't enough. <laughs> so that I could only go to the Arts Losing League for one year. Then I had to get a full-time job. <laughs> that was it. But I loved to go to the art students league. It was wonderful. It was so free. Mm -hmm. Nobody cared if you sat down on the floor or whatever you did, you could do it. That was great. And what was the, um, and 
I think you studied, you picked your professor at the Art Students League, or how, was, how were courses? Was it uh, well, were most of the students picked, working full time? The way was you would pick a professor. I picked Yasuo Kuniyoshi. He was a good artist, but unfortunately, he had cancer and he died soon after that, yeah. But he was a printmaker as well, wasn't he? Yes, a painter and a printmaker, yeah. Yeah, he was a good artist, yeah. But women really didn't count. You know, I mean, come on. The w girls in the class were, you didn't count for much. It's true. Well, is that one reason I think I remember you telling me at some point you decided to choose between becoming an artist and trying and, and becoming a writer? And is that a, yeah, I looked, I thought about it, and I thought, you know, this is the 1950s. There are no great women artists, no. So I, did, I knew there were a few good writers, so mm -hmm. I would be a writer. <laughs> Who were women, yeah. These are a few images from, from strikes. Do you want to comment anything about well, these, these, these were, strikes? Well, strikes were in New York, I believe. They were on the, uh, near where the boats were, over on the Hudson River, yes. There was a typographer strike and then also a longshoreman's Stro strike. Longshoreman strike, yeah. Yeah. See, there's one locked out. Yeah. yeah. Locked out, and presses closed. Uh, well, the, yes. Yeah. The presses closed. I just had up. Was this one? Yeah. That was the typesetter strike. Of course, today there are no more typesetters. That, that was true. <laughs> yeah. And that's the International Longshoremen's Association. Right. Yeah. And these are images from Kennedy's funeral. Yes, uh, it was so shocking when Kennedy was killed. I was in New York, and I got, just got on a train, and I stood in line for a long, oh, in the dark, I don't know what time it was, but night, and to go past his coffin. Yeah, yeah. that was very sad. This is a picture of the people standing, going by his coffin. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, these are images from the trial of Lenny Bruce. Oh, yes. He, he was very big. And I had a friend who, who was writing a book on Lenny Bruce. So we went to the trial. And that was a big scene. Oh my, it wouldn't mean anything now, but it was very important then. Well, he was a comedian, a stand-up yeah. comedian, who was uh, put on trial for a, a obscenity. Right. I mean, he said words that were common now, but right. then it was not common. If you, if you go online for younger generation and look up Lenny Bruce and see some of his comedy stunts, it will be like Saturday Night Live now, mm -hmm. but in the 60s, this is I think also 63, if I'm not. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. And this was a very important series to you. I think it would be good for you to talk about the Dola series and well, what that meant for you. Well, I was sitting in my you... little uh, fifth floor walk up, and I read in the New York Times about a, a disaster in West Virginia in a, a little town called Dola. And uh, I think 27 people had been killed. And somehow that I, I wanted to go there. So I got on the plane, and I went there. And no one else was writing about it. I mean, I was just nobody anyway. But uh, they were very nice to me. They let me go down in the mine. And I went down in the mine, and I drew pictures down in the mine. Yeah, like this one. Mm. Yeah. You can go back. And it was, it was so sad. I mean, you know, the people were treated so badly. 
their pay was so bad. And, but it's safe today, really. They're still bad minds. Yeah, bad, dangerous minds. Well, in America and, that, and, and abroad, of yeah, course. Yeah, it hasn't changed yeah, a lot, true. really. It has not changed. But this was, I'll just show this in, um, this was your, the first article then of yours that was published uh, with a journalistic article, not only the illustrations, but this was really the beginning of your, of your professional journalistic writing right. career. I wrote about Dola in this magazine, and they printed some of my drawings. What was that? Well, what's the date of that? Um, I believe that was 63 as well. Okay. Yeah. There have been many mind disasters since. Yeah. It has not changed, yeah. really. Not much. And how about these images from New Orleans? <laughs> I think I was working for the Washington Post and I had maybe a weekend off, and maybe it was a long weekend. And uh, so I went with a friend to New Orleans. I'd never been there. And I, I must say I loved it. <laughs> I loved going to Preservation Hall and seeing all the musicians. And oh, it was very exciting, I thought. I loved the music, too. Well, that's so it. explain now. How did you get? How did you go from doing this one article about Dola to working for the uh, oh, for the Washington uh, well, Post? Well, I was in graduate school at Columbia, learning how to be an English professor, even though there were not many women who were in that field either. And I suddenly thought, this is not it. This is not it. And I spent two weeks in the journalism library at Columbia. And I moved out and went to Washington. And I got a job for a little weekly magazine, or newspaper, actually. Uh, but then I got a job to be art worthy of the Washington Post. Because nobody else wanted a job. That was why I got it. <laughs> no man wanted a job, and it only paid $75 a week. So, <laughs> it sounded good to me. And I thought I'd come up in the world because I had been living in a fifth floor walk up for I don't know how many years in New York. And in Washington, and I moved to a a nice apartment and had a pool on the roof. <laughs> and I thought, oh boy, I've really made it. Because <laughs> I like to swim, but anyway, it was nice. <laughs> you're, you're right in Florida. <laughs> you, you fit to Florida. Well, um, one question with all of these images and these journalistic images, did you have a television? I mean, were some of these that maybe where you weren't right there? Did I you source some I images had a from television? television in New York? I did have one in Washington because I was working for the Post and my hours were four to midnight. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't go to sleep somehow when I got home. And there was a program on television called Creature Features. <laughs> <laughs> and I, maybe one in the morning, and I would watch Creature Features. It was you know, threatening things that were too threatening. You know, <laughs> uh, enormous ants or a huge <laughs> snake or something like that. It was not real. <laughs> yeah, <it was> good. <laughs> and uh, now, some of these are from tri uh, trips that you took, where you you interviewed, you traveled throughout the South and West yeah. Texas and Mississippi. I had and friends in Texas, and I, I'd never seen an oil well. Well, of course, I got out and I had to draw pictures of oil wells and little homes, and that was new to me too. And uh, I just sort of draw would draw everything I saw. 
<laughs> Any place I could stop, I would draw something. And these industrial uh, yeah. scenes too, are these from all over the US or where are these? I think they're around Washington or uh, around uh, Texas or maybe Louisiana, yeah, different places, yeah. I have hundreds of more drawings. <laughs> I don't know what to do with them, but anyway, I have them. Well, this, this book was inspired by me discovering these hundreds of drawings. Some of these drawings I'd knew, known from my childhood and they hung in the house, but discovering these drawings of the, of the 60s uh, was really the inspiration for putting this, this uh, book together. Uh, and we can conclude with uh, images from a writer's conference. Oh yes, I was still writing, of course, too. I started to write short stories and poetry. So I went to a writer's conference. You got the, <laughs> do, you, do they could put it on the screen or not? I don't know. We could see if we can get it up on the screen. It will, you know, there's something in academe, I don't want to say it to this audience, but it can be a little pretentious. <laughs> I mean, it's just a little, but <laughs> having, <laughs> you know, and it, it seems funny to me that the, this uh, professor was there and it behind was this big nude, <laughs> you know. I don't know where it was, probably New York. But some of those uh, people were real people. Yes, and I don't know where Here's that was, a man in the street. Yeah. I, I use that in a lot of my other books, the one about the march on Washington. Uh -huh. yeah. the, the image on the back, the portrait on the back. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. 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 They have such a wonderful strength to them. They seem so fresh. Really were done so long ago. Yeah. Mm. I, I think I stopped doing them maybe, oh, I don't know, when I got married to Laura's father. Then I started to do the colored ones, you know, like this one. Yeah, and I was going to ask, is the color ones you use primaries? I, uh, I, well, I'll tell you, I was working. I was always working. I was always writing, <laughs> and I get various jobs, but, uh, and I was always an art critic. Well, an art critic cannot be an artist. That's a conflict of interest. No, you can't do that. So I did it at night at home, and I have a catalog over there. I call them my secret paintings, because I never showed them to anybody. No, I didn't. I never had a gallery. I never did anything with them. Yeah. And eventually, when I moved here, or uh, before that, I started doing etchings. I love etchings, really. Mm -hmm. Well, do you think it would be fair to say that these journalistic drawings uh, also fed into the illustrations that you started to do for your books? Oh, I think I mean, so, yeah. But I can remember as a child you doing a lot of block prints, a lot of linoleum cut prints, and I think some of your early well, illustrations. There's one here that is. <coughs> I think it's that one there, isn't it? This one right back there. Yeah, that's oh, right. Yeah. yeah, I have a big piece of metal dipped linoleum. Yeah. And you incorporate stories into some of that. Well, I don't know whether that's a, so successful, but I wanted to have a poem and an image, mm -hmm. but just to paste it on there, I don't know if that's a good idea. Maybe. I have that poem in some one of my books, too. Uh -huh. yeah. The ink drawings have a powerful graphic quality that re reminds one of the woodblock or the linoleum block print. Right. I mean, I'm pointing to that far but that's a, isn't that interesting? Yeah. yeah that's that's that much. Very powerful graphic quality that I think. Which yeah. is when I saw that her work in comparison to that part of it's like, yeah, you know, it really reads, it really communicates with that kind of direct impact. Mm -hmm. You know, when I see these these images, I'm, I'm so they're, they're so powerful. Mm -hmm. And and it's interesting too because that she worked directly using 
India ink. There's no sketching. That, there was no like preliminary. It's all no, no, it's yeah. just to do right. it now or forget it right, because right, the person right. is they, gone. Right, and they have yeah. that immediacy to them, which I think is yeah. striking. Yeah. Well, man, maybe that's why because there's no, it, there's no timid. These strokes are very bold. Right. Right. You know? Exactly. There's nothing timid about them at all. Well, I think too a lot of these drawings. I mean, if I showed some of the the uh, covers here, but uh, a lot of the drawings were also published in this scale, and so they were a scale where they needed to really speak out and communicate fast in terms of a journalistic point of view. So, I think that I I would have a sense of that sort of that illustration aspect really carried over into some of your later more personal works. Yeah. Well, I think it's all personal. It is, yeah. But there was no opportunity for women artists, really. 1950s, 1960s, and I was not abstract. Mm -hmm. All the good women artists were abstract. 60s, 70s, I knew some of them. I wrote about them. They were good, but they weren't work like this. Yeah. Um, I have two questions. Uh, one is really short. Is there a way to obtain any of the prints from the book? I have the book, and there's a couple that I would love to frame myself. Like, I'd love to have angry Nixon in my house. <laughs> Put him in the bathroom. <laughs> is there a way to... Well, I've never... I just have them at home. I have not framed any of those. I'd have to think about it. I, I, I don't know. I, that was after his checkered speech. Oh, that was a terrible. That was, he was trying to defend himself, and he talked about his dog. It was so false. I knew then he was a cheat. <laughs> I, I can't answer. I don't know. I probably have it. Interest for me and always has been. And, uh, I like those because they're very kind of individual, individualistic and artistic interpretation of like major events that I've talked about. Right. Classes I, I've I suppose I could have a show of those sometime. I have a lot more than they're in this book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. My other question was uh, you know, looking back on that formal time for yourself and for the country, we briefly spoke before, and you mentioned uh, in the 60s, the Cultural Revolution. Which of course it is, and I'm curious as you look back, um, how do you understand that period now? Do you see the, in what ways do you see that as a revolution fulfilled? In what ways do you see that as a revolution lost, or is it some of both? You mean about women or political? I think women, political, journalistically, how has journalism changed? Oh, I think it, however you want to I knew a lot of those people in an interview, Julie Chicago. Hagen Herrera, who wrote about, uh, I, I knew a lot of those people. And I, I was always acting as an art critic. I was getting their story. I was interviewing them. And I never mentioned that I did any artwork. Mm -hmm. No. It wouldn't work. Yeah. I thought of myself as a writer. I, I, you know, I think in, in response to that, almost if you think about Lenny Bruce as having, as what he said as having been so outrageous at that time, I would say that that was enormously successful in giving us much more free speech today. I remember, though, the interviewing Judy Chicago. That was very interesting. I think I was in California at a meeting. And uh, she was very impressive. So when I was an art critic, uh, my last job was with the Baltimore Sun. And I, she was having a show of the dinner party. And I, I reviewed it on Mother's Day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about the Dinner for the Dead story? Well, it's a story. It's all made up, of course. It's not true. Uh, it's about a woman who is a nice woman, and she is busy, and she has a house and family and everything, but she gets a message that uh, people are coming for dinner.
and they're all her dead relatives. And she has to cook a big company dinner, roast beef, all sorts of nice things. And she's, she's sort of glad to see some of them, not, oh, not all of them. <laughs> but most of them she's glad to see, and they have a good dinner, and uh, then they go. Yeah. That's very striking. Mm -hmm. I uh, yeah, that book has some strange stories in it. Well, I have other strange stories. <laughs> so, if it's one story, it's about a plant, and it's told by the plant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a plant, a nice plant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's the link, too, between being the, sort of the, the narrator and, and telling the story from both the feminine and masculine gender, I noticed, um, and, and sort of playing different roles yourself as, as, as the storyteller. Was that therapeutic for you in some way? Or was it Probably, but I can't say why. I, that's why I never wanted to te uh, teach creative writing, mm -hmm. because I couldn't say anything. What could I say? I couldn't tell you how to do it. Because my stories are like dreams. They come. They come in the door. They stand right here and they say, write me. How could I say that in the class? It would be sappy. It wouldn't help anybody to write a story. No, it wouldn't. I would rather teach Frenchman English. <laughs> It's set. <laughs> and I did teach that, but I wasn't a good speller. That was bad. <laughs> I would write something on the board and I spelled it wrong, and then I had to erase it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so there you go. Do any other questions you'd like to ask? In most of your drawings or, or, or um, literature, you wrote from others' perspective. Have you ever written from your perspective on the given issues that were occurring at the time? Did you ever give your opinion on the issues that were occurring at the time? Like either cartoon wise or just in literature? Well, I'm not a, a really a political writer. I'm not, I have opinions, obviously. I wouldn't do the coal mine or something if I didn't. But I am not a political writer, really. No, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. uh, I could be, but uh, I I don't think so. Do you? I don't yes. think I don't think you're an analytical. Uh, I, I think you're. Uh, I think that's not your your main uh, pursuit in terms of your writing. But uh, but uh, you did. Uh, I mean, in the '60s, you certainly did do. Commentary and as a critic, you were certainly. Yes, I think you did I, a very I, controversial review of Susan Sontag's oh, on yes, interpretation. Oh yes, I got myself in real trouble. Let's hear this. This friend of mine, he was writing for the New Republic, and he said, "You want a job? Sure, I take any job." <laughs> and I reviewed uh, Susan Sontag's book, her first, first book. It was called against interpretation. Very famous book, and she was big, very big. Yeah. And I did a review that was not favorable. Oh, they never forgot it. <laughs> they all hated me. Right, and no, true, true. But I think also in, in Baltimore, there are a number of articles that you wrote that were, um, <laughs> that were not just about uh, I know, uh, it reviews was of art shows, but that, that uh, uh, the well, Peabody was collection. Well, the architecture critic, too, in Baltimore, and they were mm -hmm. building a lot of new buildings. And they made an addition to the Baltimore Museum of Art. And it didn't fit. And I said so. They didn't like me, and I came to the opening, and they said, there she is. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But you have to say what you say. Yeah. I, that's what, you know. 
Or the Peabody collection. There was a, a collection that was an institution selling off its collection. Oh, that was a terrible story. I don't think I want to go into that. You don't want to tell all the stories. But it was a museum uh, where they had some of the trustees who in the past had taken some of their works home. They've been taking them home. And so, and I had to compare what they thought they had with what they'd had years before. Mm -hmm. And I had someone who was my deep throat, <laughs> if you know what that means, tell me about the listing. They got me a list of what the museum had had and what they had now. Oh, they didn't want to publish that story. They did not want to publish that story. They put it on the literary page. It was not popular. I was not popular. <laughs> Good for you. No, no, I wasn't. I think in the, there were also, earlier in the 60s, there was a series both on abortion and on prostitution that you'd done I, for the well, Sun. Well, that, that maybe the... that was uh, because I was a woman. Uh, at the Post, I was the art critic, but then they decided that they had to bring in a full-time art critic. I was really, you know, part-time. And of course, it was, it was a man. Of course, a man from Canada. So I still needed my job. I wanted a job, so I got a job to be just a reporter, you know. So they said, uh, you can do a series on abortion. Boy, that was an eye opener. Mm. It was a five part series on abortion and talking to people uh, who were the fortunate, people who had abortions. Oh, it was, it was really interesting. And they did publish that. Mm -hmm. I did another on prostitution and they did not publish it. Mm. They said it's too, too many libel problems. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Anyway, after that, I got married and left Washington. <laughs> 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 then I got a job to be art critic of the Washington Journal. That was the next one. That was more interesting. Big shows, interesting shows, very yeah. interesting. Yeah. So. Any more questions? I have a question about the New Chicago um, review going on Mother's Day of the dinner party. Yes. So that's a little bit performative on your part, a little bit. Did you, did you do it on purpose, or was it just that the deadline was it just kind of an irony? Well, I think I had seen it. Uh, I'm sure I'd be called it a long time ago. I think it was showing in Texas, and I had seen it, I think, in Houston. I think that's right. I may not be true. Well, I don't know what year was it? Well, uh, I worked for the uh, Sun from 1978 to 86. So it's somewhere in there. I can't tell you. I, I have the things at home, but I can't tell you exactly. Uh, but I had seen it, and I just thought, put it in on the Mother's Day. Why not? What was your reaction when you walked in and saw it the first time? I, I, well, it was certainly different. I'm trying to answer you truly. Uh, I don't know. I think I felt it was certainly innovative, but is it artistically beautiful? Maybe. Maybe. Can I have one more question? What? Ever, will we ever see a graphic novel from you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I can't answer. <laughs> maybe a collaboration? Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Uh, but I remember going to the meeting of, uh, it was California, in early 70s, I think, where they had a woman's house. 
Oh, yes, and all the women who were important in, you know, women's art and right. that was very interesting. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you, did you see the woman house? Yes, I oh, went in wow. it. I went in it. Wow. Yeah, and it gave you an odd feeling. Just is this only for women? It gives my students an odd feeling. Right yeah. Still in 2015. Do they still have it? Very comfortable in 2015. I didn't mm -hmm. feel uncomfortable. I liked it, but who wants a house with no men? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, it's okay. <laughs> well, maybe that's a good. Good point to end. Yes. <laughs> I think I better close off before I say something wrong. Thank you so much. Thank you.